Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Solid Garage. So the other day I was doing my ball joints and had my Jeep kind of tipped up a little bit, just a little trick on doing ball joints, and I noticed uh, some fluid leaking past my axle seal. I had the classic axle seal fluid dripping down onto the tire, so let's get that fixed up. And I've got almost everything I need here. I've got my new uh, seal. This is for the passenger side seal. Here's the part number. Got uh, some Redline GL5 7590. This was given to me by Redline for these projects. Some coffee, gotta have that. Some nice big washers. We'll get to how to use the washers to install this seal. And a long threaded rod. The one thing I don't have for this job right now is a little gasket that goes around the shift motor housing. But all these parts, all these supplies, I'll link in the description below where you can find them, order them ahead of time to get ready for your project. And one last little tip, order a couple extra seals because inevitably you're gonna kinda tweak one or mess one up, at least I usually do. You know, the first time you're trying to get one in there, it just gets offset a little bit and you kinda ruin the seal. So they're not that expensive. Order a couple extras, so if you do ruin one, you got one on hand and you can keep going with your project. You're not dead in the water. All right, when you're working on it, you wanna disconnect your battery, get your wheels chalked, and then let's uh, jack it up, get that front tire off. And as we're going along here, I'll cover some tips and tricks, things I've learned over the years as I've done this uh, job a few times on a few different Jeeps. So doing it a few times, I've kind of learned, learned a few things, some tricks. Let's start off by removing the brake caliper here. Let's get this brake caliper out of here, out of the way. Be careful not to put too much torque on your brake line there. All right, we got that hung safely out of the way. Now we can get our rotor off here. I should also point out that I'm actually using two jack stands. I like the idea of having more than one fail safe because we are going to be crawling underneath the vehicle here to get to the uh, shift motor housing. And the last thing you want is for your Jeep to fall down on you. I also throw the uh, tire under there. People have been crushed under cars. Now we're gonna take the hub and axle shaft and this uh, guard off all as one unit. So there's three bolts. You can see them, there's one right here, one down underneath there, and one on the other side right here. We're gonna take those guys off. And these three hub retaining bolts, they require a, a 12 point socket. You can't use a six point socket, 13 millimeter, 12 point fits on there real nice. And we're just gonna back them out a little bit. We, we're not gonna take them all the way out quite yet. And the reason we're not taking them all the way out right now because we're going to actually use them to help drive the uh, hub out because sometimes sometimes the hub can be kind of kind of fused in here kind of stuck in there so we're just going to back them off about a quarter of an inch then we're going to use put a little socket on there and then we're going to use these to kind of help drive the drive the hub out i think that's yeah that's enough my hub is broken loose now so now we can take these bolts the rest of the way out. But sometimes these uh, hubs can be kind of fused in there, so that just kind of helps you get it out. Now we're gonna take the hub out and the uh, axle shaft here all as one unit. Being careful not to drag the axle on the inside there. We just want to keep it clean and smooth. And normally you'll find a little bit of fluid comes dripping out here. 
We are dry though right now. It's finished. There you go. So pretty clean, pretty dry right now, but part of the reason is I'm low on fluid because it's been leaking. I have the passenger side intentionally tipped up higher and that just kind of helps keep the fluid down in the uh, axle tube and differential. It just kind of helps prevent it from running out when you're doing the uh, passenger side here. If you're doing the driver's side, which mine is not leaking right now, so I'm going to leave it be, you actually have to take the uh, differential cover off and everything and pull the differential gear unit out and everything. I'm leaving that alone right now, so just doing the passenger side. So next, let's move underneath and work on the uh, shift motor housing or the CAD housing, whatever you want to call it. And this would be why I like to use two jack stands. If this thing fell on me, that's the end of Dale. And I also throw the tire under here with me, absorb some of the impact. <laughs> okay, and here's our shift housing. How's that gonna come off there? Looks like it should just slide off, but it's not. Not moving. Oh, we'll just disconnect it. So this is actually a vacuum operated. A lot of guys like to switch this over to a cable operation because they don't like their entire four wheel drive mechanism being linked to a little vacuum line that could fail. So there is a conversion out there, which someday I'll get to. But right now we just need to get this uh, shift motor housing cover off here. Oh, look at that, first try. What is that, 7 sixteenths. Oh, we're gonna lose some fluid. Dang it, I wasn't ready either. There we go. I did have some cardboard down there, but uh, yeah, I was hoping to keep my fluid. So let's take the cover off here. Yeah, I'm gonna let it drain for a little bit. My cover is gonna be all covered in oil. Here's the shift fork. All right, let's come back in a few minutes. And this fluid looks a little milky too. So it means water's been getting in there. Got a little bit of cleanup to do. A little kitty litter down here. Magical stuff when it comes to cleaning up oil. That's good for now. Okay, back at it. So here's our shift fork right there. And when we put this back together, how did I get my wife's hair on here? When we put this back together, we need to make sure this fork engages that little collar there. Set that guy off to the side. I have to clean this surface all up and get a new gasket on there. So there's inside the shift housing and this is the little collar. So this guy, that fork, slides it back and forth. See if I can get it on here. Come on. There we go. So this little, the little fork engages this and slides it back and forth to lock your intermediate axle with the, uh, with the inner axle there. And when it's locked together, that's what engages your four-wheel drive right there. But let's get this little collar out of here. And there is our bad seal right there. That's the guy we're replacing. So I'm just gonna take a little shop rag here jam it in here to keep a lot of my debris out. And before I start working on my new seal, I'm gonna clean up this gasket surface right here so we can get our new gasket on there.
guy here, this is just the little switch which tells you if you're in four-wheel drive or not. It just depresses that little guy. And as your fork moves back and forth, can you hear that? It's the entire vacuum system right there. Alrighty, so down deep inside the axle there, we're going to catch just the edge of the seal there and pop it out. Alright, now we're going to use a metal rod, hopefully with a, like a sharp edge on it. We're going to just catch the edge of that seal in there, so let's feed this pipe down in there. And right there I can feel it's on the edge of that seal. We can tap on it and pop it loose. All right, let's just kind of clean out some of the gunk. Make sure we have a nice clean surface for our new seal to go on. Okay, now here's the part where you want to be a little uh, meticulous and we're going to create this system right here to help drive this seal in place. We're actually going to pull it into place. Now let me take this apart and show you what we got going on here. So this is a half inch threaded rod. I'm going to take the nut off the end here. And then we've got one washer here that is uh, inch and three-eighths and a half inch opening. Then another washer that's our driving force. This is what pushes on the outer edge of the seal here to help drive it into place. And it is two and a quarter inches long, just slightly bigger than the seal. Then on the inside here, I've got this washer and it's a two inch washer, but it only has a half inch opening and the purpose of it, it is to help keep the seal centered onto the uh, threaded rod there and it fits just inside of the seal. So that's what helps keep the seal right in the center of the threaded rod there. Because a, a big key to this whole operation is just keeping everything straight and driving it, driving it in straight. Then our seal comes off and I have actually five washers here. These all have the uh, half inch opening and they're all inch and three-eighths as well. They're about the same thickness as the seal here and the purpose of them is to uh, butt up against these two jam nuts right here. So I've got two nuts here jammed together and it is to, they fit just inside of the seal and they just provide enough depth for these other washers to give something to butt up against so we make a nice uh, tight system. So let's take this guy off put our seal on like this. Two inch washer. Two and a quarter, two and a quarter washer. And another washer to help drive it in place. And then our nut on the end. And then we have a nice little system to help pull this uh, seal into place. My recommendation is after you buy your seals, I'll link all these in the description below. After you get your seals, Take them down to the hardware store with you. Take one of them down there and match up all your washers there just to create a system like this. This works fairly well for me. 
But the super fun part of this is we cannot put this in the axle assembled like this. We actually have to stick the threaded rod into the axle tube and assemble this whole thing through that little shift housing opening. So let's do that real quick. Now with the wheel straight so that the steering knuckle here is straight towards the axle. Let's uh, set our rod in here. There we go. In order that they go in. Okay, now I can start assembling it. And with my right hand, I'm kind of pulling on the threaded rod, giving some resistance to it here while I tighten this nut. And as long as everything is square, we should be good to go. Okay, now on this end of the threaded rod, I've got a five pound weight here on the outside of the knuckle and then a bunch of uh, washers just to give it a backing and a nut on there. We're gonna get this all nice and centered, right in the center of the uh, knuckle there. So get the weight right in the middle because we want to pull it in straight. Once everything is straight there, we can start tightening it down. Let's just double check the position of my seal here. And yep, that looks good. All right, everything looks perfectly straight. So now we can go ahead and start tightening it down. And this will pull that seal right into place. And once it gets to a place of where it feels pretty, it'll be snug, but then you'll kind of run into resistance, like a lot firmer resistance. That's kind of how I know it's seated far enough. So now we're gonna just back everything off and check the seal. So I've also got uh, two nuts jammed together down here at the end. Uh, just to give me something to hold on to while I'm tightening this down, because otherwise your rod will spin here. So make sure you get plenty of nuts and washers. But let's uh, back this thing off and check our seal. And we're also being gentle that these threads don't cut the inside of the seal, the rubber on the seal there. You wanna keep that seal off of the threads. Let's disassemble and check it out. All right, awesome. Looks like that seal's in straight. That should do the job. So now it's time to reassemble everything, but there's a few things we wanna pay attention to when we're putting stuff back together here. So next we're gonna stick our axle back in. But before we do that, we wanna take a little bit of gear oil and lube up that seal. We just don't wanna be sticking that uh, that axle back in on a dry seal. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of oil on our finger here and kind of lube up that seal. That should do it. Slide this collar back on first. A little extra grease in here where the uh, hub sits into the knuckle. All right, let's gently Slide our axle back in place. There we go. And pop these hub retaining bolts back in. That's these three uh, 12 point socket 13 millimeter bolts. And we're gonna to torque these guys to 75 foot-pounds. Let's get our rotor back on here. And our brake caliper. And the brake caliper mounting pins. 
And of course we've got a little bit of grease on our uh, mounting pins here. And let's torque those caliper mounting pins to 132 inch pounds. Next let's put our shift housing back together. So we've got this uh, collar right here which engages our four wheel drive. We need to make sure that this fork sits over the top of that. You don't want to get it uh, off centered or anything or your four wheel drive won't work. Before we do that though, we gotta put our gasket on here, but I don't have that yet. Honestly, I'm still waiting for those gaskets to come in the mail, so let me tell you how to wrap everything else up though. Once we get our new gasket, which is coming in the mail, we'll slap that bad boy on there. Make sure this fork engages the collar. And then we're gonna put our bolts in and tighten these guys to 96 inch pounds. Hook up all of our connections. Then we'll come around to the front side here to our differential and we'll pull our plug right there and then fill it up with uh, some Redline 7590 GL5 until it starts spilling out of that fill hole right there. That's when you know you're full. Then we'll slap our wheel back on there, torque our lug nuts to 100 foot pounds, but be sure to order all these parts ahead of time so you don't run into this issue like me where my gasket still isn't here. I gotta wait. So all these products are linked in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Let's do this half toss.